lunch and learn today. Um, this is to this is titled creating sustainable committees with Main Street America. Um, my name is Alexander Taylor. I am the community and economic development program manager with the Office of Community and Rural Affairs. Today we have Abigail Huff with us, who is the senior program manager for the Indiana Main Street program and Jackie Swihart, who is a representative of Main Street America. Um, quickly, we will do some quick housekeeping. Please keep your microphones off until we have questions or any time for that. Um, cameras can stay on or off. That is really up to each individual participant. And then questions, we will be doing questions at the end, but please feel free to utilize the chat box to put any questions and myself and Jackie will kind of circle back at the end and work through those together, okay? With no further ado, I do want to introduce Jackie. Um, Jackie is from Main Street America and she will be the one facilitating our presentation today. So Jackie, feel free to take it away. Great, thanks Alex and thanks Abby. Let me just rearrange my screens a little bit here. Okay, well, hi everybody. Um, for those who I haven't met, I'm Jackie Swihart. I'm a program officer for revitalization services with Main Street America. Um, one thing I love to do is talk about anything related to organization when we think about the four points. And so today's topic, creating sustainable committees, I was very excited about. And so hopefully uh, there'll be at least a nugget of information in here where you can take it back and try to implement it in your own community. So, you know, kind of thinking about committees and volunteers, you know, I, I know everybody on this call, we're all coming from different program structures, different program sizes, different places in our organization's life cycle. Yet at the end of the day, the following is always true. We all rely on volunteers to get the job done. And so when we think about volunteering in Main Street, there's usually three types of volunteers that we can consider. One, those visionary leaders who have those connections and experience that make them very effective board members. There's also those occasional volunteers who help when needed for events or just special one-off projects. And then third, there are those people who have the right skills and dedication to plan and implement projects through committees. And so those are the volunteers we're really gonna hone in on today. And it truly is a major necessary job to recruit, train, motivate, manage, and reward the people who give their time to your organization. And so we've all probably experienced that, that feeling of having a shallow pool of committee volunteers and that causing too much work uh, to fall on the shoulders of the same people. That we, we all know likely causes burnout and could prompt those volunteers to leave. So turnover can definitely damage an organization, but at the end of the day, these volunteers are the lifeblood of your program and we really need to spend a lot of time working with them. And so all volunteers, regardless of their background, they really need that strong management and a clear understanding of their purpose as a volunteer. And so today we're gonna think a little bit about how management is more than telling people what to do. It really involves getting the right people to do the right jobs and using their skills in the most effective ways possible. So we're gonna be talking a bit about what a good volunteer program involves when thinking about committee volunteers specifically. So we'll cover some topics like defining your volunteer needs, creating a volunteer recruitment program, interviewing and placing volunteers. How do we orient them and train them? How do we provide some supervision and evaluation? And then of course, how do we recognize their achievements? So those are the things we'll cover today. Before jumping in, let's highlight a few reasons why our committees are so important to our work. As you're becoming more and more familiar with Main Street America's new standards of accreditation, you will see specifically in standard two, uh, an emphasis on committee involvement. And so let's just recap a bit why they're so important. Committees are truly the backbone of a successful Main Street program because they're the ones who are gonna be serving several important functions. First, they're the ones who are implementing the program's activities. Second, they provide a structured framework through which volunteers can become actively involved in the work that we do in Main Street. 
Third, they enable members of different groups who have a, a stake in the commercial district's future to work together and accomplish common goals and build either new or strengthen existing relationships. And then finally, committees help us develop new leadership to sustain our Main Street efforts for years to come. We always say in Main Street, the work is incremental, and that's also true when we think about leadership development and volunteer recruitment. Too often, you know, we all see the same people serving in multiple capacities within our organization. We see board members who are also serving on committees. Uh, and, you know, that makes a lot of sense to have a board member serve as a committee chair because we want that line of communication. However, it's also likely that their skill set doesn't necessarily lend itself to both roles in the most effective way. And so while board members, for example, are visionaries, and yes, they might oversee a committee, the committee itself should really be made up of additional members of the community with that expertise around how to implement projects. I do want to acknowledge the obvious and the thing that I know we're all probably feeling right now, especially. Volunteer recruitment is hard. It's maybe one of the more difficult tasks that we have as Main Streeters. And you might be hearing some of the ideas or concepts being presented today and think to yourself, we tried that once and it, it didn't work. What I'm gonna encourage you to do is to keep trying, keep asking, and keep that focus on recruiting volunteers. Just like when you're fundraising, you have to ask more than one time. And so maybe something didn't work once, but that doesn't mean it's never gonna work. And so yes, volunteer recruitment is hard. Recruiting committed, consistent, reliable committee volunteers is harder. But our work is really about community development and committees are where we're able to develop the people who make up our community. So finding the right committee volunteers first requires, you know, that general understanding of a committee's responsibilities. So just want to recap that because I know some of us are maybe newer to Main Street or it's always a good refresher for those who have been part of the network for a while. So generally speaking, committee responsibilities, with the approval of the board, committees are responsible for things like determining the committee's overall goals and prioritizing the objectives required to meet each goal. They are responsible for developing a balanced range of short and long-term activities for each objective and to really give the program that record of accomplishment as well as create a basis for more complex efforts in the future. They implement several high visible projects that keep the efforts of the program in the public eye, but they also are addressing more complex projects that can take some of that behind the scenes work. They are establishing, they're empowering, and they're monitoring maybe other task forces or subcommittees to address specific issues or accomplish specific projects. And so it's really important that each committee initiates working relationships, you know, with agencies and community groups that have similar goals or who are currently involved with projects in your community. So the thing about Main Street, as we all know, it's not all on us to do this, this work. A big part of our role is to make connections and build relationships and partnerships to get this work done and to build community. So committees can absolutely reach out to other agencies and groups to see what they're already involved in. For example, the design committee, they could reach out to an existing neighborhood beautification committee to team up on a landscaping project, um, maybe to develop more beneficial partnerships and avoid duplication of effort. Um, those committees can offer assistance to groups who have established projects in order to learn about their activities and at the same time promote their program. Um, as a program matures, other organizations will seek out Main Street to co-sponsor their projects, but something a committee can do is to reach out to others and help them facilitate projects. 
How you structure your committees is just as important as who you have on your committees in terms of getting the work implemented. So what you're seeing here on the screen is probably a very um, recognizable structure of a Main Street program. For a very long time, Main Street America recommended that commercial district programs set up four standing committees corresponding to the four points promotion, design, economic vitality, and organization. This is especially true as you're beginning your organization. You can really address a large variety of projects within this structure, and th these committees are crucial to the program's success. It helps us coordinate a comprehensive effort to complete projects within the four points. And so this structure might work very well for you, um, but you are not limited to this structure. So if the four committee structure works for your organization, stick with it. Don't break what's not broken. Um, if you find that this structure poses some challenges or maybe does not lend itself to transformation strategy implementation, there are other model <laughs> models that have proved to be effective. And so just keeping in mind that if your committee structure is working, keep on keeping on. But if it's not working well, maybe think about how to restructure that. And so maybe organizing your meetings around your transformation strategy, regardless of which committee staff or task force is working on a project and make your central agenda item that strategy. And then your committees can work toward the projects related to that. So here's an example. You can organize your revitalization work in different ways. Um, it can again, you can continue that for committee structure, but you might think about your local context and depending on your local needs, you may think about having more of a staff driven approach or a work structure formed around project teams or external partnerships. Just know that it's going to take time for you as an organization to evaluate what type of committee structure works best for you and that there is no one size fits all. If you're not sure whether your existing committee structure is working, the first thing I would recommend is to start by assessing the current culture of your organization. So pictured here is one example of a Main Street volunteer experience evaluation. And so it's always a good start to ask the people who are already volunteering for you, especially in a committee role, how would you rate your experience? So asking questions around what was your orientation process like, your training process? Do you think that the tasks assigned to you have really suited your skill set and your interests? So taking some time to intentionally seek feedback from those who are already doing this work and using that information to then develop or update a volunteer recruitment strategy. And I can send you this template and all the templates that I'll show you throughout this PowerPoint. I'll send that to uh, Abby at Indiana Main Street as a follow up. So really just make those necessary improvements, invest time in reflecting on the current structure, because it's very important that we build an organization worth giving time to. So using that feedback received from your current volunteers, you then want to start shaping a volunteer recruitment plan. And I'm sure this snippet of a work plan looks familiar to many folks. We've been talking a lot about work plans lately within the context of the new accreditation standards. So volunteer recruitment, it begins with understanding your need for volunteers. And that's where your work plan comes in because it reflects your goals. It defines specific jobs and skills needed to complete projects that will help you achieve those goals. So use your work plans to predict how many volunteers you will need to complete the projects and figure out which skills you need. Recognizing the timing of the work plan projects 
helps you recruit volunteers early so that they will have enough time to get trained and become acquainted with your organization before having to perform whatever task that they're signing up for. Once you have defined these program needs through your work plan, you can then start searching for the right people. So really, the work plan is the best tool for managing volunteers. Board and committee chairs should be regularly checking the work plan, ideally weekly, but whatever format works for you, to check and see what tasks are due and then contact those volunteers, ideally a few weeks before their deadlines. That's going to give them enough time to act if they find that a volunteer is having difficulty completing the task. Um, but one way to set your volunteers up for success is to assign them those very specific tasks, tasks rather than asking them to handle an entire project. So you see here just some examples of how activities are broken down into specific tasks. Also, you know, let's say your organization is developing a business directory and the projects manager decides that it's reasonable for each volunteer to contact 10 business owners. If your district has 100 businesses, then you would need 10 people assigned to this task. The project manager would also assign other individual specific tasks like working with the printer or distributing the final product to 10 specific locations. And so how can we take what feels like a very big project or task, break it down and uh, divvy that up across more people? Once you know what you need in terms of volunteers based on your work planning efforts, I would recommend writing job descriptions for volunteers that include some really basic information like a job title, the purpose of that volunteer role, the different tasks that you would be expected to participate in, maybe some qualifications, what's the time frame or time commitment for this role, also highlight the benefits of volunteering. Maybe it's you're offering free admission to events or maybe you're hosting some social events. Whatever it is, definitely try to also highlight the benefits of volunteering for your organization. Ask for feedback um, on your job descriptions from people outside of your organization before making them public. Think about, does this sound exciting? Is it clear? If you get stuck, look for good volunteer postings from other organizations or different volunteer websites. Um, but thinking about if you were time pressed, but also socially conscious, which volunteer ad would prompt you to respond and then try to create a description around that. Think about where you might find the right people. And so if you're looking for a specific skill, you might recruit from professional organizations, maybe a business or schools. Typically stakeholders involved in the Main Street program come from the immediate community, but sometimes they can come from the larger area and that's okay too. So I will send you these examples, but you see on here um, an example for what it means to be a committee chair and then also to be a volunteer on the committee. So now that you have your committee structure outlined, your volunteer needs mapped out, and some job descriptions in place, it's time to recruit. So some fundamental ways that you can recruit committee volunteers. Low hanging fruit, thinking about placing uh, these job descriptions or call for volunteers and ads, flyers, um, posters, even just word of mouth, thinking about putting um, information in newsletters, even if it's of other organizations, um, radio, your website. Think about information people are already receiving, like a utility bill, and try to add in this call for volunteers within that communication they're already receiving. You can also do some appeals to special interest groups. And so maybe really targeting schools or universities in your areas, targeting churches or other civic organizations, if you have senior organizations, even newcomer, newcomer packets. So as people move into the community, they know right away that there are opportunities for them to become involved. 
Also think about speaking engagements or giving presentations to different types of groups. Um, you might host a recruitment workshop or again, host some type of social gathering, or you might reach out to civic organizations and ask to present to their group just to share the mission, what you have going on for the year coming up and what your needs are. A few more uh, examples of how you might recruit committee volunteers. Um, pictured here, you see an example from uh, Poncha City, Oklahoma, and they brought together property owners, merchants, volunteers, donors, board members, city officials, residents, you name it. They all came together and um, the Main Street program organized a creative and, and fun schedule for them of activities. And it was a really big success for them. It was a three hour event. They had about 125 people come during the first half of that mixer. People were mingling. They enjoyed, you know, beverages and snacks during a social hour. They also had um, time where the program overviewed opportunities to get involved with their organization. And then attendees were invited to get involved and stop by five activity stations that were set up around the room. And the stations included things like a photo op area. It was a backdrop of their downtown streetscape. They had a volunteer photographer there to capture photos of attendees. They also had a station with a map of downtown and the guests were invited to put stickers on businesses they worked at or owned, buildings they owned or um, identify their favorite downtown spots. They had a paint by number section and this is really a group art project. They wanted guests to be aware of the arts and culture strategy that they were pursuing and thought that this would be a really good way to get people involved. And then they had a, a station on big ideas where people could share their big ideas and you know their wildest dreams for downtown. And then they had committee signups, right? Because all of this is trying to lead people to want to be involved. And so having an area for guests to sign up for committees, uh, that was really one of the main goals is to get people excited and to showcase opportunities um, they might be interested in. So consider an open house or a matchmaking event. If you're not sure who to invite to that event, work together as a group to brainstorm. Uh, here's one finding volunteers worksheet where people can individually go through and think, who's someone who lives in the neighborhood that I think would enjoy working with Main Street? Um, who's someone I admire and respect, but who knows little or nothing about Main Street? Name someone who has moved to the community in the past year. So maybe as a board, maybe as an organization, you know, have people work through this and that will help generate a list of potential invitees uh, for a mixer or some type of open house event. You can also get volunteers to recruit other committee volunteers by making it a friendly competition or offering a prize to those who are able to recruit others. And so you can also think about matching the recruiter with the audience. For example, asking a college student to recruit other students or a Rotary Club member to recruit other members. So make sure your recruiters are strong ambassadors for your organization. They really should be trained to briefly describe the organization's goals, their accomplishments, current projects, and volunteer opportunities. But, you know, work with different groups like the Lions Club or JCs on joint projects. That is an excellent way to leverage your community's existing volunteer resources to achieve similar goals. Um, but you can make this this fun, right? Group volunteers into teams, invite them to recruit at least one new volunteer per group. But maybe everyone loves a little friendly competition. So maybe have some kind of incentive there. Give them time and give them any support that you're able to. And this can be a really fun way to recruit new committee members. Also, rethink what committee volunteering can look like. Uh, virtual volunteering is really on the rise and there are lots of opportunities there. So thinking about offering different types of virtual opportunities that can be done from the comfort of somebody's home. 
It might be some graphic design work. It might be social media management, maybe language translation, virtual training. Uh, here's an example of a, a web page audit form. You know, sometimes we forget about our website. We forget to take a look at it and to do a general audit. And so maybe one virtual volunteer opportunity would be to have folks audit your web page and provide some feedback that you can then give to a, a, your website developer or have as you think about updating that. Also rethink your, your committee meeting structure. Um, conduct shorter meetings that are more task or project focused rather than long committee meetings with a large agenda to cover. It can help to take away some of the commitment, right? Because people are a bit hesitant to say, I will be a committee member when they know it might take a lot of their time and investment. So try to take away some of that commitment rather than give the expectation you have to come to X number of meetings. Try to rethink your meetings and maybe make them more of an interactive workshop related to that committee's focus. So if it's a workshop, you know, that not only provides some engagement, but it also gives an opportunity to identify potential volunteers who are really going to show up, show enthusiasm and dedication. Also keep in mind that a good, a good volunteer manager does not make volunteers stay longer than they have agreed. When the time is up, thank them and let them leave. Another way of respecting volunteers time is by making sure that Meetings are organized, efficient, and they end on time. Meetings should only include the people who need to be there and really should only be convened when the committee or a project will benefit from that collaborative group work. So again, maybe something more of a workshop versus a meeting will sound more attractive to a potential committee volunteer. Another idea is to make committee volunteering part of someone's paid job. You know, it is really difficult to ask people to dedicate their personal time in a world where we have so many different um, responsibilities pulling at, a, at our attention. So one thing you might consider is corporate volunteering. You can reach out to local businesses and corporations to see if they have volunteer partnerships and if not work with them to establish one. And so offering them that opportunity to participate in team building for their staff and maybe getting them to dedicate a few hours each month. I was doing a quick Google search and I have never heard of this company before, so and this is not anything I'm familiar with, but there's a CPA company here based in Indianapolis, and I saw on their website that they do uh, allow their staff to serve as volunteers, members of committees, or be advisors on boards. And so thinking about really investing in that relationship and education component with employers in your area, communicating the value of staff involvement in their communities, and trying to build a program with them that allocates a few hours each month for volunteers to serve on your committees. Make committee volunteering a social event. So family and corporate volunteering are newer trends and for some opportunities it might work that a family or a neighborhood or a business group takes on a role and you know that will make sure the task at hand is always covered. Um, typically, we think of group volunteering for projects like you see here. It's a cleanup day. How can a family serve as an ambassador for maybe one portion of the community? But try to think creatively about how group volunteering can transfer to committee um, roles as well. And so maybe there's one project within the committee's work plan and it's a good good task that you know a family could get involved in together as a group because that accountability piece is really important in making sure that the work is implemented and that group activity can help with that accountability. 
also negotiate. As an organization, you get to decide what's negotiable and what's not. If a volunteer is interested in only part of the position description, work together to decide if there's flexibility in that role, modify the position to meet the volunteer's needs. As long as it's a mutually beneficial relationship, it's okay to negotiate. Couple other ideas, substitutes. If you are really investing a lot in training and really need that return on investment, you might consider offering a substitute or backup role. There might be people who are more than happy to go through all the training, but can't commit to an obligation for a year, but that could be available as a substitute when your regular volunteer is unavailable. And so it's providing you with coverage and providing the volunteer with a role that's a better fit for them. Also job sharing. Perhaps a committee role feels too overwhelming for any one volunteer. Consider how can you split it so that the responsibilities are shared among multiple volunteers. That's going to help make the time commitment and tasks more manageable. So maybe it's co-chairs or co-leaders for a certain uh, committee project. That way you're sharing and again, part of that is building in the accountability. I also wanted to mention um, as you're recruiting volunteers for committees specifically, I would recommend using a volunteer reference form when you're vetting potential volunteers. Committee members, they do play bigger roles and they do have bigger responsibilities than a general volunteer. So it's worth the extra vetting. Here's one example of a reference form that you could send out to get some feedback. Todd Noon, a main streeter and a local director, he uh, put together a, a great article that I'll send to everybody afterward on how to get sponsorships for volunteer recruitment. And so, you know, we get sponsorships for our events, for our projects, but how can we get sponsorships for volunteer recruitment? First, we have to determine the elements that we want to see in our program. We have to think about the framework, the cost associated with each component, add that all up and then create a customized customized sponsorship package for each potential sponsor. I will send you this article as a follow up, but think about how you can garner sponsorships for volunteer recruitment or at the very least include a line item in your budget that that will help make your volunteers a priority. At the end of the day, when it comes to recruitment, never assume what a volunteer wants to do and never dictate what a volunteer should do. So to really find and retain the best volunteers, we want to make sure those volunteer opportunities are well defined. And we want to know um, what needs to be accomplished and how those volunteers can help you reach that goal. And so while we want to be prepared to process potential committee volunteers quickly and efficiently, we do also want to think of them as customers and we want to offer them your best customer service. That's providing clear information. It's training. It's quick placement, using that positive, upbeat, informative language when recruiting. Tell people what you're looking for and why, and use terms like you want rather than need people for certain tasks. So really trying to appeal to your volunteers' interest and assigning them those tasks accordingly. If necessary, modify their job description or offer the person a different assignment. Don't assume that a public relations specialist will want to volunteer for the organization committee or that an architect wants to work on design projects. Some people want to look for uh, an interest outside of their day to day job. And so if you find during that interview process, the person will not be a good fit. Don't be afraid to gracefully say no and to replace them depending on their interest and skill set. If you do um, decide to place the volunteer, do so quickly. If you let too much time lag between volunteer interviews and assignments, you risk, you know, the you risk appearing unprofessional and you could possibly lose them to another volunteer opportunity. And so one way to stay ahead of this and to track um, or to place volunteers quickly is to keep track of your new recruits, record their contact information, their skills, um, the hours that they've served in the past in a spreadsheet or 
now that everybody in Indiana is moving toward Maestro, think about how you can use that database uh, for volunteer tracking. The best strategy for retaining volunteers, committee volunteers especially, is making sure that they have a positive experience. So giving them the tools to support them to do a good job is that the best strategy for achieving that. Orientation is your chance to make sure people know what they're doing and can get things done. It's also your opportunity to make a good impression with new volunteers and to build their confidence. I think we can all remember how frustrating the first day at work can be when we don't know what to do or where things are. And so, you know, we do depend on our jobs for income. We end up finding out what we need to know. But volunteers, they don't have to waste their time standing around, feeling awkward, confused. They can just leave. And so train all volunteers before they actually show up to work by explaining the project and everyone's roles in advance. We do have a lot of resources at Main Street America's website, including some foundational series on the four points. Indiana has a lot of um, information as well that you can utilize for orientation, but at the very bare minimum, give people history of your organization, its accomplishments, your mission, your vision statement, your current projects, who your key partners are, what the four point approach is, what does your work plan look like, and just make sure they have all that knowledge necessary to do the job well. If a volunteer program is relatively structured, then an annual review for your committee volunteers might be appropriate. Uh, if you want to do this, keep the sessions confidential and keep them one on one. But also ongoing feedback throughout the year can be just as productive, and that's usually how most Main Street programs address this issue. So whether your review is formal or informal, just make sure you're maintaining a positive, motivational tone. Annual reviews, just like in our professional lives, should really be a two-way conversation that is first recognizing what the volunteer is doing well, and then share ideas to help the person become more effective. So if you're conducting this committee um, evaluation or check-in, make sure you're listening carefully to their ideas for improving the organization. You might use uh, an evaluation or check-in form like the one pictured here. It'll help give you some structure and guidance to the process. And so um, making sure, just like you would with a director, that you have those clear check-ins and that way people, if they are having a hard time meeting those expectations, you can catch that early. Board members are volunteers too, I'll just say, and they should evaluate their own performance each year as well. And so consider a, a check-in, regular, informal or formal, consider that for volunteers at all levels. You can also, um, aside from the one I just showed you, you can Google a lot of, you know, nonprofit um, volunteer evaluation forums and find different examples. Here is an example that is not from the Main Street community, but I think is still interesting and can be easily applied. I, again, was just Googling different examples of this to see what is out there and what we can learn from other organizations. And this happened to be from Oregon Health and Science University. This is just a snippet of that evaluation form, but you see the opportunity for the volunteer to rate themselves on different parameters. And then the, in this case, appraiser, whoever would be conducting this review also has the opportunity to provide feedback in terms of competency. So there are lots of different examples and different ways you can do this. Thinking more about role clarity as a tool for retention, I do think it's worth talking through responsibilities of paid staff and committee volunteers. So you may have heard this before, but the role of a director is often compared to that of a choir director or a conductor. Their talents are best utilized as leaders of the entire group. They're responsible for bringing diverse talent together empowering people to find their perfect fit and form teams that have common ground. Then 
they can lead the entire group to produce the desired outcomes. So just like a conductor is not expected to fill in for a, somebody who plays the violin, it is not recommended that Main Street directors take on specific tasks, manage individual projects, or lead committees that others within the organization are able to handle. So the director's responsibility is really to lead the entire program and empower his or her base through participatory leadership. So how does that work? Well, if the promotion committee is producing a festival, for example, those volunteers are responsible for organizing and running the event. The director can help coordinate the production of promotional materials, but they're not the ones who are actually organizing and running the event. Another example, if the organization committee is starting a fundraising campaign, those members are going to be raising the funds, but they can ask the director to help coordinate the campaign and communicate with volunteers. So, Ideally, and I know for some this feels like a very difficult world to get to, but ideally the director is supporting volunteers at all levels as they progress through the volunteer journey. And so all the way from volunteer identification to volunteer ret retention, the director is supporting that process, again, serving as that conductor. Um, but the committees are the ones really planning, implementing the work. And hopefully when we think about that volunteer journey, it's going to develop into a leadership pipeline or life cycle. So we do as main streeters have um, built a foundation for strong community leadership. And so Thinking about that diverse base of leadership, that's one of the key factors that sets Main Street apart from other economic development approaches. But a strong base of community leadership, it doesn't happen overnight, it is incremental. And so we need to think about going beyond simply inviting people to be part of our boards or committees. As leaders, we need to make an effort to define and confirm those roles and responsibilities and to make sure that we're keeping an eye out for aspiring volunteers who would like and can handle more responsibilities and climb up that volunteer ladder. So we want to see volunteers, you know, start by working at events and then move up to managing projects and then maybe chairing a committee and possibly then serving on the board. Rather than looking for board officers all the time or committee volunteers, how can we as program leaders watch for great volunteers who are already part of our program and promote them. It's a great way to reward volunteers, build that strong leadership the community needs, and to help them um, advance in their own professional and personal development. Beyond uh, defining roles, uh, empowerment is crucial for building that strong leadership base. And so really the key to retention is to allow people to lead. So we want to promote communication skills, have committee members really take a lead on interacting with others, um, have them work directly with stakeholders as appropriate, help them build up those leadership skill sets if they'd like to. Empower them to make decisions, uh, having them take on leadership roles within projects, that's going to help them build confidence in their own abilities. Let's promote innovation, create that environment that encourages innovation and that creative problem solving. And don't dictate. While we do want to have specific tasks available and outlined and understand our needs, we want to provide guidance and support in getting folks there. A board that dictates too much to the committees, that is going to drive away volunteers. Motivate them by giving them a role in creating the work plan and help them feel empowered. And I will say successful leaders motivate and manage people to bring about the desired results. And so you all, whether you're here as a director, um, 
a board member or even a committee chair, whatever capacity that you're bringing to, to the table today, you are a leader of your organization. And so, yes, there are lots of volunteers who volunteer because they're mission driven or because they care a lot about uh, their community. But more times than not, people follow people. And so lead by example. And you can do that by giving yourself permission to be a leader. Some people think they're not worthy to lead. Others, you might think others are more capable of doing this, but you know what? They're not stepping up to serve and you are. So don't be reluctant to make decisions. Um, many of us really just need practice to gain confidence in what we're doing. So give yourself permission to be a leader. Also take the time to be a leader. Uh, that means attending meetings that are required of you. Um, give yourself time. On average, a board member should expect to give four to four to ten hours a month to the job. And if a committee member is seeing that a board member is not doing that, it's harder to really show up to the plate and and do what's expected of you. Be positive and optimistic. Leaders, you all are setting the mood for your program. Start meetings with positive remarks. Resist the tendency to forget the good things and focus only on problems. Recognize and accept that the leader serves as a symbol. And so when you become a leader, you are a symbol of the program. And so be aware that your personal opinions may be interpreted as those of the organization and just take care how and when you speak. I think one of the most important ways to lead by example is to be a worker. Those who pick up a broom on cleanup day, they're going to win a lot of respect and support. Effective leaders don't ask others to do something that they would not do themselves. So you want to be a worker. You also want to be sure to maintain a balance. Don't try to do it all yourself. And then show people that they are part of the vision. People need to know that they are among the shapers and contributors to the program. And so keep lines of communication open and share that vision for the program's future. And then building sustainable committees also means making volunteers feel like they're necessary to the work and that they're appreciated. Main Street programs have always been creative in ways that they think and recognize volunteers, but whatever that looks like for you, just be intentional and don't let it become an afterthought. Make a line item in your budget for volunteer appreciation. Don't forget that how you treat volunteers is also another way to reward them. So making office equipment accessible for people working on Main Street assignments or holding meetings in comfortable places and offering refreshments, remembering volunteers' names and keeping them updated on projects, sharing information that'll keep them in the loop. That's gonna build a cohesive organization, but it's also going to make them feel like valued members of the team. So thinking about how we can continue to recognize our volunteers is critical to retaining them. So I love this team. Together, everyone achieves more. The good news with all of this is that you, as Main Street leaders, do not need to master it all. As a community-driven effort, Main Street, we draw upon experience and expertise of everyone in the community. And so that director position is taking an active role in connecting, engaging, and leading individuals. But to be most effective, uh, we have to also make sure people can bolster their own skills and maintain that strong commitment to personal development, encourage people that they serve with to learn alongside them. So it really is this collaborative effort where if we work together, we do achieve more. And so that will ultimately foster an environment for that continued innovation and growth for everyone involved in the work of Main Street. And so I also just want to say thank you all for being leaders in this movement. We celebrate your dedication. We see the strength of our network and recognize that it's because of Main Street leaders like you all who are contributing to the success of this movement. And so just remember, 
recognition for yourself as well. So uh, thank you for being here today and for your commitment to community. I hope there is at least a couple ideas that resonated with you. Um, but Alex, you know, I'd love to turn it back over to you and see if any questions have come in. Thank you so much, Jackie. Truthfully, great presentation. Sorry, we got people coming back from one of another meeting. Um, great presentation. Really appreciate the forms too. I think that's a really great example for people to use and pull for their own use in their Main Street organizations. So truly appreciate that. Yeah. As of right now, I don't see anything in the chat, but I do want to open it up to the general group. Please feel free to raise your hand, unmute yourself, jump right in with questions if you have any, and we will kind of walk through that together. Or if you have examples of yeah. you know, what's worked well for you in terms of committee recruitment, retention, would love to hear those ideas as well. I do want to just chime in here. Um, you know, when Jackie was talking about um, structuring your committees, and, you know, she said, make sure, you know, if you're starting off, we'd like to see you working within those four committees just to get you off the ground. But once you have established those, really think about, like, what committees are right for you. Um, when I was a director, our organization had made the decision to not do any you know, free community events because we had other organizations in our district who were doing them. You know, we had a couple museums, we had a city market. So um, we decided to get rid of the promotions committee because if any events that we did, they were either fundraising, which we put them under the org, or they directly benefited the business. So they were like shop hops or um, shop small Saturday, which then we put under economic vitality. So really look at like what works best for your organization. We had a marketing coordinator, so we didn't have to have that promotions point, but we were doing all the work already that the promotions committee does. So really think through that. It helps kind of distribute your volunteers as well. A great example. All right, do we have any questions from the group for Jackie? Any experiences you wish to share? We have a quiet bunch this Wednesday, which, <laughs> which is OK. <laughs> it's OK. It's summer. I know everyone is pulled in a million directions mentally. Well, Jackie, I wanted to I say thank you. I think it's a lot of there was a lot of information you gave us today. I hope I'm look look forward to seeing the slides and go through it and share it with our group because um, there's a lot there that we're not currently utilizing to its fullest. And Maestro is so new to us too, so we're excited um, to I, I'm going to be excited to share this information and see how we can incorporate um, maybe some of those. Um, useful tools that you provided today. So thank you. Thanks, Ann. Yeah, I, I think that's definitely first step. Just kind of digest it. We'll send you the follow up materials. Take your time with it. Whenever a lot of information is thrown at you, I I don't want people to feel like, oh, I need to do it all right now. And so thank you, Ann, you know, for just highlighting that you'll take it back, think through it decide what makes sense for your program and, and move forward that way. All right, any other questions, comments, concerns? All right, I don't see any Jackie, so let's let's just dismiss a little early, give people their seven minutes back. <laughs> I'm gonna stop the recording and I truthfully wanna thank you, Jackie, and everyone who attended today for coming to this meeting. I think this was great information and we will make sure we follow up with all of the information to the group as well. Thanks all. Thank you, have a good day, everyone.